In this worked example, we're going to calculate how many neutrinos you detect from a given supernova. Now, supernova 1987A, the only one for which neutrinos have yet been detected, the most neutrinos are picked up by the Cameo Candy detector. However, Cameo Candy was subsequently replaced with a much larger one. Instead of having 3,000 tons of water, the new Super Cameo Candy has 50,000 tons of water, which makes it much more sensitive. So the question is, can this new improved Super Cameo Candy detector actually pick up supernovae all the way out from the Virgo cluster of galaxies? The trouble with Cameo Candy detecting supernovae is that they can only pick them up from more or less inside our own galaxy and the Magellanic Clouds, and those are going to be very rare. But if we could find supernovae all the way out to the Virgo cluster, where there are thousands of galaxies, we should be able to pick up some all the time. So, we've got the Virgo cluster of galaxies, and let's imagine a supernova has gone off in there. The Virgo cluster is 16.5 megaparsecs away. And then we've got our detector on Earth, which is a very large water tank surrounded by photomultiplier tubes under a mountain in Japan. So the question is, are there going to be enough neutrinos coming out from the supernova to trigger something observable in this water tank? So that at least a few of the neutrinos will go into the tank, interact with the water molecules, produce a flash of light, which is picked up by the photomultiplier tube. So the first step is to work out the flux of neutrinos here. How many neutrinos per square metre are we getting over there? So that's one square metre. How many neutrinos are going to go through this? And that's given by the inverse square law. We know that the total number of neutrinos emitted is a whopping 10 to the 57. But the number per unit area here, the flux, is equal to the total number, total, divided by 4 pi d squared, where d is 16.5 megaparsecs. Now a megaparsec is a million parsecs. A parsec is 3.09 by 10 to the 16 meters. So d is about 5.1 by 10 to the 23 meters. Square that, push at the bottom, or 4 pi. And it turned out the flux of 10 to the 57 divided by 4 pi times this squared. That turns out the flux comes out as about 3 by 10 to the 8 neutrinos per square meter per second of the Earth if there was a supernova in the Virgo cluster. So 300 million neutrinos a second going through any given square metre. Sounds like that would be hard to miss. But remember that neutrinos are very slippery customers. So let's imagine we've got a square metre area, and the neutrinos are coming in from this direction, and we've lined up all the water in an enormously long column, all, all the 50,000 tonnes in an enormously long column. Of course, Super Cameo Candy isn't designed like that. It's actually a much more round shape. But that doesn't actually matter, because let's say we had instead two square metres and only half the length, or three square metres and one third the length. The flux, the total amount of neutrinos hitting, will go up proportional to the area. The number of atoms in each column will go down proportional to the area, and the two will actually cancel out. So it turns out it doesn't actually matter what the shape of the water is. We can pretend it's all hitting one square meter, and that will give you the same answer. If you have any other geometry, you'll get the same answer, because the extra area from making it wider will cancel out by the lack of depth. OK, so say it hits one square meter, we know the flux. What are the odds that a neutrino will be intercepted? Well, we know that the cross-section for any given atom or molecule is a cross-sectional area of... 10 to the minus 47 meters squared. Now this is an approximation. Uh, to work this out properly, you'd have to look at the detailed nuclear physics of how things interact. We're going to say that's roughly the intersection of a water molecule with a neutrino. In fact, you'd have to look separately at the hydrogen atoms and the oxygen atoms, and they each have their own thing. So that's much more complicated. But let's assume that's roughly speaking about the cross-section per water molecule. So how many water molecules do we get in 50,000 tonnes of water? Well, one water molecule weighs about 16 for the oxygen plus 1 for each hydrogen times the atomic mass unit. OK, 
kilograms. So if you have 50,000 tons, the number of molecules is going to be equal to 50,000 times a thousand, because a ton is a thousand kilograms, a metric ton, divided by this, so it's 18 times 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27, which comes out as about 10 to the 33 molecules, which is a lot. So we have a flux of 3 by 10 to the 8 neutrinos going past 10 to the 33 molecules. So how many are going to actually be intercepted and cause a flash of light or something we can measure? Well, that number is going to be, number of interactions is going to be equal to the cross-section times the number of molecules times the flux. which unfortunately comes out as a very small number, 5 by 10 to the minus 6 interactions. So what that's telling us is that 50,000 tonnes of water is nothing like enough to actually pick up neutrinos from a supernova in the Virgo cluster. Mama, that's pretty tough. Now I've done the full calculation. You could actually, however, get this answer much more quickly. We know that the number of interactions you're going to get is going to be proportional to the volume of the water and inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Now, the volume is 15 times what it was before in Camille Candy. The distance has gone from 50 kiloparsecs for the Magellanic Cloud to 16 megaparsecs, so that's about 320 times more. So just look at the ratio, you can see the number is going to be equal to the number where they got from supernova 987a times 15 over 320 squared. Now 15 over 320 squared is a very small number, so that's going to tell you you're not going to be seeing it. That's the easy way to do it.